power-ups in anime are a trope so common that we basically just assume that they're gonna happen in any shonen that we watch. We fully understand that our main characters and their cast of side characters aren't gonna stay as strong as they are for the entirety of the show. There's gonna be some life event or power-up that comes along their way that allows them to be as strong as the bad guy that's threatening Earth. And whether that be a new form like Super Saiyan or KCM2 or a new move like Spirit Gun or the Rasengan, we know that that power-up is always on the horizon. And what do we do? We eat it up every single time. Because power-ups are fun. Watching a character yell out their new move or mode is hype every time we see it. And while things like Super Saiyan and the Rasengan are ingrained into our minds, truly one of the greatest power-ups in anime that I believe doesn't get enough hype is the Bunkai. See, because here's the thing, while power-ups like Super Saiyan look cool, unfortunately, Super Saiyan looks the same on anybody who uses it. And anybody who achieves any form of Super Saiyan gets basically the same abilities. And while seeing Goku's hair slowly change the blonde as he freaked out over Krillin's death was an iconic moment, watching him switch into Super Saiyan mode has kind of just lost its edge. But you know what's genuinely never lost its edge? Bunkai. Whether it be because Ichigo's Bunkai form looks so cool, or because he yells, Bun Kai! Or because Bunkai are different for every single person who unlocks them, whatever it is, Bunkai have never lost their edge of coolness, to me at least, which make them one of my favorite power ups in any manga. But genuinely, out of all of those points, the thing that I love the most is that every person's Bunkai is different. It's based off their Shikai and their Zanpakuto, which is based off of their spirit. Which is why today I want to talk about Bunkai. But making a video talking about every single Bunkai would be over an hour long. And I've already thrown a couple of 45 minuteers at my editor this week, so we're going to do a top 10. Specifically, today we're going to talk the top 10 strongest Bunkai in Bleach. Ranked and explained. And then maybe one day down the line, we'll do an all Bankai ranked and explained video. But for the moment, you get 10. But before we get to ranking or explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you want to watch content of mine that's over an hour, then you're going to love my anime podcast, Yutaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So, Bunkai, the second and final upgraded form of a Zanpakuto, a form that prior to Ichibei giving it a name was simply known as Shinuchi. Bunkai are one of the rarest abilities in all of the Bleach universe, as Bunkai releases are only available to Captain Level Shinigami, which is why in order to become a captain of the Gotei 13, you have to achieve Bunkai first. In order to achieve Bunkai in the first place, one must be able to materialize and subjugate their Zanpakuto spirit. This means that somebody wanting to use a Bunkai needs to be able to materialize their Zanpakuto spirit in the real world, and then subjugate said Zanpakuto spirit. It's stated that even the highest level of Shinigami take almost 10 years to figure out this ability. But the Bunkai isn't truly the final upgrade to a Zanpakuto, or Shinigami for that matter. As well, Bunkai 4 Forms can be achieved, Bunkai forms can also evolve with time, which comes from a deeper understanding between the Shinigami and their Zanpakuto spirit. We've seen this in cases like Byakuya or Ichigo. But just because all Bunkai are hard to achieve, that doesn't mean they're made equally, as Bunkai can be anywhere between 5 and 10 times more powerful than their Shikai, which depends on the strength and the training of the person unleashing said Bunkai. Therefore, it's actually pretty easy to rank the Bunkai, as some Bunkai have been depicted to be absolute world-breaking abilities, while other are just kind of cute. And oftentimes, the disparity in that strength is equal to the disparity in strength between the people using said Bunkai. But since we are talking a top 10 here, it's a pretty stacked list, which is made incredibly evident by the fact that coming in last place, we have Unahana. Retsu Unahana is the captain of the 4th Division in the Gotei 13. She is the second oldest and most experienced captain out of the Gotei 13 outside of Yamamoto, and is considered to be the Soul Society's best healer. But there's a lot more to Captain Unahana than just being the Soul Society's best healer. See, Captain Unahana's Shikai manifests as a giant manta ray capable of healing people with its stomach acid. So basically, all Unahana has to do to heal a massive amount of Shinigami simultaneously is fly over them with a manta ray and unleash stomach acid on them, which you would assume would would hurt them, but in actuality heals them. Now, obviously, Unahana has other ways to heal people outside of her Shikai, but that's the way that she's usually depicted doing it. But outside of being the Soul Society's greatest healer, Retsu Unahana was also the first person to hold the title of Kenpachi, a title reserved for the strongest Shinigami outside of Captain Yamamoto. Now, there's only one Kenpachi allowed per generation, and for a new Kenpachi to exist, a person who wants to be Kenpachi has to kill the previous Kenpachi. How did Retsu Unahana and Kenpachi Zaraki coexist simultaneously? 
I don't really know. In fact, Retsu Unohana surviving throughout the lifetimes of the second through the 10th Kenpachis brings into question the legitimacy of their titles in the first place. And in actuality, it's not until Kenpachi Zoraki actually kills Retsu Unohana that he truly gets the title of Kenpachi. I just remembered her Shikai doesn't actually operate by dumping out stomach acid. You have to go into her Shikai's mouth and it can hold up to six people simultaneously. I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. But we're not talking about her Shikai. In fact, we're talking about her Bunkai. Yes, the Bunkai of the first ever Kenpachi. And this Bunkai is just as powerful as the title that Unohana carried for over a thousand years. See, when Captain Unohana unleashes her Bunkai, she drags her hand across its blade, covering her Zanpakuto in a thick layer of viscous blood. But not only is her Zanpakuto covered in this thick viscous blood, but upon the activation of this Bunkai, the entire surrounding area is covered in this thick viscous blood-like substance. And all of this blood like substance is under Captain Unohana's control. See, Captain Unohana can attack in a traditional sense, swinging her Zanpak toe covered in this blood-like substance. And by slashing her blade, she's either able to slash somebody with said blade or fire off powerful slashing attacks from a large distance away. Not to mention that all of the blood-like substance that is now covering the entire battleground that Unohana is on can be used to attack an opponent from all angles, while also being used defensively to block incoming attacks, making this Bunkai the perfect balanced offensive and defensive weapon with the capacity to attack from any angle and defend from any angle. Not to mention that Minizuka's Bankai can also heal Unahana at any point. So while Unahana's Bankai is active, she doesn't have to use Kaido, the healing part of Kido, to heal her wounds, as Minizuki's Bankai heals her automatically. Not to mention there's a high possibility that the blood-like substance that Unahana manifests has an ability to melt people. Because during the battle between Kenpachi Zaraki and Unahana, Kenpachi Zaraki keeps saying, I'm melting, I'm melting when he gets covered in her blood-like substance, which sets her Bankai at the perfect offensive-defensive weapon that also heals her and also might act as a corrosive acid to everybody but her. And we wonder why she held the title of Kenpachi for over a thousand years. But let's stick with the theme of people who were captains of the Gotei 13 and now no longer are, because coming up in our number nine spot, is Kisuke Urahara. Kisuke is the former captain of the 12th division of the Gotei 13. However, he now lives in the human world, even after he became the first ever president of the SRDI, the Shinigami Research and Development Institution. Kisuke is known far and wide as one of the most intelligent characters in the entirety of Bleach, with genuinely only characters like Maiori and Aizen giving him a run for his money. Not to mention he is also the mentor responsible for turning Ichigo into a Shinigami. Kisuke is truly a master of everything you can master in Bleach. Be it Hakuda, Shunpo, or Kido, Kisuke can do it all. But for those of you who are anime only, you haven't even seen the half of Kisuke's power. See, Kisuke's Zanpakuto, Benihime, has an odd shape. It's like a cane sword. Now, Kisuke often refers to his sword as not nice. And until we see the releasing of his Bankai, we genuinely don't really understand that, as the release of his Shikai just turns his cane sword into a more traditional looking sword. Something crazy like Captain Unohana's Manta Ray. Now, after he unleashes his Shikai with the command word Awaken, his Shikai is able to produce and manipulate red energy, which can do a ton of different things depending on the command he gives his Shikai, like creating a shield to act defensively or a net to capture somebody. But once we see Kisuke's Bankai release towards the end of the manga, we begin to understand why he referred to his Zanpakuto as not nice. See, Kisuke's Bankai manifests as a giant woman, and Kisuke, being the genius that he was, was able to figure out how to use this Bankai in just three days. But does this giant woman operate like Kumamara's Bankai and just fight as an avatar for Kisuke? No. In fact, that would probably be a lot less scary. Kisuke's Bankai has the ability, I'm gonna have to read this, Kanembaraki Benihime Aratame, which has the ability to restructure anything that it touches. Think of Overhaul's quirk from MHA, but make it way scarier. This technique can be used offensively or in a support capacity, but essentially anything that Kisuke's Bankai touches offensively, it's able to dissect. That is to say that by restructuring your body, it can slice you or anything into shreds, but it can also be used in a support capacity. See, because this Bankai has control over anything with structure, it can also be used to heal. Let's say, hypothetically, you have your arm blown off. This Bankai can sew your arm back on, but it can go further than that. It can actually optimize any part of your body or any thing to make it work at the highest level of capacity. At one point, Kisuke uses this Bankai to make his arm stronger. In essence, this Bankai is able to cut anything into an infinite amount of pieces and sew it back together, which can either destroy, optimize, or fix. And because of that, 
it's kind of broken, which is why we don't see it until like chapter 630. Now, technically, this Bankai does have a weakness that the second that you leave the range of its abilities, any changes that are inflicted to you revert back to normal. So if hypothetically, let's say your arm does get cut off and this Bankai is what heals it, the second you step out of the range of this Bankai or the Bankai is deactivated, arm falls back off again. Oh, the Bankai's activated. It's very strong. Not as powerful as our next Bankai because our next Bankai in our number eight spot belongs to Shinji. Shinji Hirako is the captain of the 5th Division of the Gotei 13. But also on top of being the captain of the 5th Division, Shinji is also the leader of the Visards. Now, Shinji's Bankai actually isn't depicted in the manga. In fact, we learned in the light novels that take place after the conclusion of Bleach's manga, Can't Fear Your Own World, that Shinji is banned from using his Bankai within the Serate. And for good reason. See, Shinji's Zanpakuto Sakanare has some interesting abilities. See, when Shinji says the word collapse, his Shikai is active. Activated. And for a long time, we believed that Shinji's Shikai ability was the ability to reverse somebody's senses. See, Shinji, when he activates his Shikai ability, has an ability known as Upside Down World. See, when Shinji activates his Shikai and spins it, it releases a pink mist. And those who smell the aroma of said pink mist have their senses reversed. Up is down, down is up, left is right, and right is left. But it's worse than this. Everything about your senses is inverted. Their eyesight, the direction of incoming attacks, and even injury that they incur are all inverted. If you get your left arm cut off, you believe your right arm has been cut off. And if that sounds broken, there's also the fact that Shinji is able to choose who is affected by this upside down world. Meaning if he releases it, the aroma won't invert the senses of his allies. However, that isn't the case with his Bankai. See, Shinji's Bankai takes the whole reversal thing to a whole new level because the ability of Sakunade isn't the reversal of your senses, it's just reversal. And Shinji's Bankai, which once again I'm gonna have to read, Sakashima Yokoshima Hapafusagari, also releases a pink mist. However, upon coming into contact with this pink mist, your senses aren't reversed, but the idea of enemy and foe is reversed. And this is indiscriminate. It affects not only enemies, but also allies. Which is why, actually, when Shinji uses this Bankai, he's trapped within a flower of his own creation, as the fumes would even affect him. Therefore, the reason that Shinji isn't allowed to use this Bankai is because if he used it around other Shinigami, they would attack either him or the other Shinigami around them. However, we did get served to an anime-only scene where Shinji got to use his Bankai against 20 Stern Raiders. And without fail, each and every single one of these 20 Stern Raiders killed each other. I'm sorry, they weren't Stern Raiders, they were sold that. There's so many German words. Because of the way that Shinji's Bankai works, it's hard for him to find scenarios when he can use it. Because if there's even one person around him who's on his side, he can't use his Bankai. Therefore, his Bankai is kind of the perfect anti-gank tool. But considering the fact that Shinigami rarely fight alone, he doesn't have a lot of capacity to use it, which is why he's banned from using it in the Serate. But it doesn't stop it from being one of the most powerful Bankai in all of Bleach. But what truly makes a Bankai Bankai powerful. Is it the Bankai upgrade itself, or is it the person wielding the Bankai? Because a relatively weak Bankai can seem very powerful in the hands of an incredibly powerful person. While an incredibly powerful Bankai can make those who are usually weaker be on par with people who are way out of their league. These are the kinds of questions you have to ask yourself when considering how powerful truly is a Bankai. Are we taking into consideration the strength of the Bankai itself, or the amount of damage that can be doled out with the Bankai through the use of the Shinigami using said Bankai? Because here's the thing. There are some Bankai on this list, most specifically the next Bankai we're going to talk about, that are strong because of the person using them. Well, Bankai like Shinji's are just strong, and therefore make a fair to middling strength captain one of the stronger captains. The reason that I'm saying all of this is because coming in at number seven is going to be somewhat of an unpopular pick. Because coming in at number seven is Kenpachi Zaraki's unnamed Bankai release. See, a lot of people believe that this is one of the most powerful Bankai in all of Bleach, and I think by placing it at number seven, I'm agreeing with that sentiment. But I kind of stand pretty firmly in the camp that the reason that Kenpachi Zaraki's Rocky's Bankai is considered to be one of the strongest Bankai in existence is because it belongs to Kenpachi Zaraki. I mean, we've seen that Zaraki, with just the power of his Shikai, was able to defeat the strongest Stern Raider in existence. A Stern Raider whose ability was just whatever I imagine becomes reality. If I imagine you didn't cut me, I'm healed. If I imagine there's a meteor falling from the sky, it is. If I imagine my body is as hard as steel, it is. Basically, this Stern Raider was God. This Stern Raider was so powerful, it was able to create 
other Stern Ritters. And how does Kenpachi Zaraki defeat this godlike Stern Ritter? Well, when Gremmy the Stern Ritter literally throws him into space, he cuts space, and then makes Gremmy so afraid of him that Gremmy, with his imagination power, paints Kenpachi Zaraki to be a monster that's going to destroy him, leading to Gremmy's demise. Oh yeah, and did I mention that he wore his eye patch throughout this entire fight? The eye patch that seals the majority of his Ryoku? Meaning he was battling against Gremmy, the Stern Ritter with the ability to make anything he imagined reality without the majority of his strength. But in this battle against Gremmy is the first time that we actually see Zaraki unleash his Shikai with the command, Drink Nozarashi, which not only makes his Zanpakuto a massive axe, but also makes it so it can basically cut anything, like being able to cut a meteor in half with one swing. So what does Kenpachi Zaraki's Bunkai do? Well, it turns his skin red and it gives him black markings across his entire body, while also releasing a wave of energy so powerful that it levels buildings. But more or less, it just does exactly what the release of his Shikai does. It makes him stronger and increases his cutting power. I mean, like, kind of to an insane degree, but when we consider the fact that a Bunkai release increases the power of a Shikai, five to ten times, and his Shikai was able to somewhat effortlessly cut a meteor in half with one swing, increasing the power of that Shikai five to ten times was obviously gonna be kind of an insane upgrade. And yeah, in this form, is he able to cut one of the strongest people in Bleach's universe directly in half? Yeah, but I don't know whether I can give that to the Bankai or Kenpachi Zaraki just being insane. So... Seven feels safe. Now, if we're power ranking the strongest people in Bleach, actually... Zoraki probably lands somewhere around seven again. Yakaba Ichigo Aizen, Mimihagi, the Soul King's other hand, whose name I'm forgetting, and then and then maybe Kenpachi Zoraki? Oh my god, I completely forgot about Squad Zero. Regardless, it's a powerful Bankai. It belongs to be on this list. Where? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. Does it belong to be under our number six spot? You tell me, because coming in at number six, we have Toshiro Hitsugaya's Bankai, Daigorin Hiorin Maru. Captain Hitsugaya is the captain of the Gote 13's 10th division, and he actually formally served as the third seat to Ishin Shiba, Ichigo's father. For a man coming in at four foot four, Captain Hitsugaya packs a punch. See, I know what you're saying, if you're anime only, I feel as though Captain Hitsugaya always comes onto the scene and then just proceeds to lose. And like, to a small degree, you're kind of correct. See, well, Captain Hitsugaya is absolutely a child prodigy who's been compared to Genie Jumaru, which makes sense when you consider the fact that he's the youngest Shinigami to ever achieve the title of captain. There's times when Hitsugaya feels somewhat unimpressive. And a lot of that actually feels tied into his Shikai and his Bunkai. However, Hyanamaru is the strongest of all ice types on Pakuto in the Serate. Because of this, Hitsugaya doesn't need water to be present to use his ice abilities. In fact, Hitsugaya's control over his Zanpakuto spirit is so insanely powerful, he can use a large amount of his Bunkai abilities while his sword is still in Shikai, which is why the loss of his Bunkai was actually not a huge deal to him. With really the only difference between his Shikai and his Bunkai being the amount of ice that he can generate. But because this after losing his bunkai, Captain Hitsugaya is able to do things that adapt for the loss of the amount of ice he can create, like creating vacuum seal ice that uses many layers of ice with air between them in order to seem like it's actually more ice. And we see him use this strategy against the Stern Ritter Baz B. However, unfortunately, once again, this doesn't work against Baz B, and neither does a Shikai ability that allows him to manifest Chinese dragons out of either water or ice, as a Shikai allows him to control not only ice, but also water. But here's the thing, Captain Itsugaya's Shikai has always been stated to be one of the most powerful out there, as the sheer release of his Shikai within the Serate when he doesn't have a limiter on creates thunder and hailstorms. But even though there is only a small amount of difference between his Bunkai and his Shikai, Captain Itsugaya and everybody else knows that his Bunkai is the strongest strongest form of his Zanpakuto. And upon the release of his Bankai, his ice begins to flow onto his actual body covering not only his arms, but also giving him a tail and dragon wings. But this form of his Bankai is actually incomplete. See, after his battle against Aizen, Captain Hitsugaya committed himself to 18 months of training his Bankai, and it's revealed that the ice petals that are generated when he activates his Bankai aren't a countdown to when his Bankai won't be unusable, but actually a countdown to when Captain Hitsugaya will be able to age himself up into an older adult body so that he can use the entirety of his Bankai strength. Strength. And trust me, the completed form of this Bankai is something else. The biggest ability of this completed Bankai is Flash Freezing. See, Hitsugaya, with a simple hand motion, is able to Flash Freeze anything. This also extends the things that his sword cuts. So anything that Captain Hitsugaya hand motions at or cuts is immediately 
Flash frozen. Additionally, anything that he freezes will have all of its abilities negated. So let's say hypothetically somebody else manifested their Bunkai. If Captain Hitsugaya froze it, all of that Bunkai's abilities would be negated. Not to mention, if anybody touches Hitagaya in this form, they are immediately flash frozen. Being this Bunkai is not only one of the best offensive weapons in the entirety of Bleach, but also the perfect defensive weapon. Not to mention, if Captain Hitsugaya channels his energy for four seconds, he's able to unleash a wave of ice that freezes everything in front of him. Basically, this Bunkai is like Captain Yamamoto's Bunkai, but instead of fire, use ice. It is very strong. But there's a reason that Hitsugaya doesn't have the title Kenpachi, because the Kenpachi will always be the strongest in anything, be it Shunpo, Kido, or Bunkai. And that very much applies to our next entry on the list, because our next entry on the list is Soya Azashiro. What? Nick, I've never heard of Soya Azashiro. Who is he? Why does he have the Kenpachi title? Well, Soya Azashiro was the eighth Kenpachi, and he was introduced to us in the light novel Bleach, Spirits Are With You Forever. Soya is not your traditional Kenpachi. He's elegant, he has slick back hair, he's from one of the royal families, as the Asashiro family is an incredibly important family in the Serate. But it doesn't mean he's not insanely powerful, because he is. See, here's the thing. We've already established the fact that in order to become a Kenpachi, you have to defeat the previous Kenpachi. And Soya defeats the seventh Kenpachi almost effortlessly. And the seventh Kenpachi was a candidate to join the Royal Guard. In fact, Soya was said to be so powerful, he was considered to be a threat to the Serate. Even the Royal Guard were afraid of him. Soya even goes on to battle against the likes of Kenpachi Zaraki and fight with him evenly. In fact, after their battle, Sosuke Aizen says if Soya had taken the battle seriously from the beginning, he would have defeated Zaraki. But where did all of this strength come from? Well, his Bankai. See, what's weird about Soya is that his Shikai does nothing. The entirety of his Zanpakuto strength is tied to his Bankai. But here's the thing, Soya's Bankai release, Urasukuro, actually only makes his Shikai more powerful, even though his Shikai has no unique abilities or even a way to awaken it. In fact, Soya's Shikai is often compared to an Asa Uchi, which are the spirits that turn into Zanpakuto. And the ability of Soya's Bankai allows him to fuse with anything. That is to say that Soya has the ability upon the activation of his Bankai to fuse with the air or the ground. However, since he almost constantly has his Bankai released, he is constantly fused with the entirety of the Serate. That is to say that tracking his exact location is almost impossible, because while he may appear to be somewhere, a large amount of his essence is fused with the surroundings. But because for the majority of his life he was mostly fused with the Serate, he learned everything about the Serate and knew everything that was happening in it, meaning anything that was living or non-living, organic or inorganic, was subject to his purview. Which truly scariest about all of this is the fact that he's able to merge with two substances and combine them. But he can also fuse with more things than just physical objects. He can fuse with your five senses. He can fuse with spiritual concepts, which is why he's able to merge his senses with the Serate, which gives him the ability to know everything that's happening within the Serate. However, merging with something can take a differing amount of time. If hypothetically Soya wanted to merge with my phone, he could do it instantaneously. However, merging with something as massive as Serate took him a year. And believe it or not, Soya can use his technique offensively and defensively. Let's say you're about to strike Soya with a sword strike. He can merge with the air around himself and simply become air. Your sword will pass through him. But he can also merge with your body and tear you apart from the inside out. On top of this, since Soya has the ability to merge with the air around him, he's able to teleport wherever he wants, which has been compared to space-time manipulation and its speed and amount of distance covered. But here's the thing, he doesn't even have to do anything as dramatic as merging with your body and jumping out of you. He can merge with the air around you and make it as sharp as a blade and slash that blade into your neck, all without appearing to move whatsoever. So yeah, terrifyingly powerful. Maybe deserved to be higher on this list, honestly. But because he's from a light novel, I figured putting him higher than number five on this list would make a couple of people angry. Especially when you consider the fact that coming in at number four, we have a lot of the manga reader's favorite Bankai of all time, and that would be the Bankai which belongs to Shunsui. See, Shunsui Kiraku is the former captain of Division 8, and is now currently the captain of Division 1, making him the head of the Gotei 13 in the Serate. Shunsui is a lazy man, however, an incredibly powerful lazy man. He's also one of the only people in existence to manifest a two-handed Shikai. In the anime, we've seen that Shunsui, with the power of just a Shikai, is so powerful, he was able to battle against the number one Espada Stark 
evenly. See, Shinsui Sanpakuto was called Gaten Kyokotsu, and it's comprised of Itachi and a Wakazachi, which are two Japanese short swords. However, when Shinsui says the incredibly long-winded term, the flowery winds become disturbed, the god of flowers sings, the heavenly winds become disturbed, the devil of heaven sneers. I'm not even going to try to do that in Japanese. His Zanpakuto is released into its Shikai form. Now, a Shikai kind of has an insane ability. It makes children's games real. See, the Zanpakuto makes the rules, and anybody who steps within a barrier established by the Zanpakuto Shikai release form is subject to those rules, Shunsui included. But what does this mean? Well, all of Shunsui's Shikai abilities are manifested forms of children's games, like Bushogama, which happens when Shunsui spins his two Shikai and creates massive spirals of wind that are not only able to deflect Sarah Blasts, but also disorient an opponent. And these tunnels of wind are supposed to be representative of a spinning top game. But there's also his other ability, Kageoni. The rule of this game is that whoever gets their shadow stepped on loses, and this game manifests by allowing Shun Sui to jump in and out of shadows. But he can also control these shadows, being able to attack somebody by attacking the shadow they're currently standing on. And on top of this, this ability also gives Shun Sui the ability to make multiple shadow clones who can attack his opponent. So in actuality, what is Shun Sui's Shikai release? Basically, whatever he wants it to be. It's very powerful, but not as powerful as his Bankai. See, his Bankai, Katen Kyatsu Karamatsu Shinju, one of the coldest Bankai releases in existence, much like Shinji also affects everybody around him, and therefore Shunsui will only use his technique if his allies are far enough away that they won't be affected by the Bankai. Because once this Bankai is released, everybody within a certain area is affected by it. And the way this Bankai works is that it has four stages. The first stage causes any wounds that either Shunsui or his opponents have inflicted upon each other to show up on each other. So let's say I'm fighting you, and you cut me on my cheek, but I cut you on your peck. Once this Bankai is activated, I would get a cut on my peck, and you would get a cut on your cheek. All of our wounds are shared. Which sounds like a really bad ability, I know, but it gets worse. Well, I guess it gets better. It it's not good for anybody. With the second stage, Shunsui's opponent gets covered in red blisters that bleed profusely. The third stage throws Shunsui and his opponent into a massive amount of water until one of them runs out of Ryatsu or drowns. And the final stage of this Bankai has Shunsui tying a rope around his opponent's neck and pulling it taut, which explodes their head. So Shunsui's Bankai is pretty much a guaranteed kill. Not only just a guaranteed kill, but also guaranteed torture. It's pretty much the last Bankai you want to be caught in. Except for maybe Maoris. And this Bankai is enough to kill one of the strongest people in Bleach's universe, so yeah, it's gonna be number four. But enough about that captain of the first division, let's talk about another captain of the first division, because coming in at number three, we have Zonka no Tachi, also known as the Bankai of Genryosai Yamamoto. Captain Yamamoto is the founder of the Gote 13. He has been instrumental in everything that has ever happened in the Serate. Everything from the creation of the 13 court guards to the casting of Yahaba into a 1,000 year kind of timeless void. But even at 5'6", 115 pounds, and over 2,100 years old, Genryoso Yamamoto was still one of the most dangerous men in existence. See, remember when I said that the title of Kenpachi goes to the strongest Shinigami in the Serate not named Captain Yamamoto? Well, that's because Captain Yamamoto has always been the strongest swordsman in the Serate. He's the founder of the Shino Academy. He has over a millennia of experience in combat. Captain Yamamoto is so powerful, he battled against Shunsui and Joshiro simultaneously and didn't even get injured. He's so powerful that even without his Zanpakuto using just Hakuda, he was able to battle against characters like Vanterweiss, but his true strength does come from his Zanpak Toe. See, his Zanpak Toe in its non-release form is a cane, but upon the muttering of turn all creation into ash, it's released into its Shikai form, which is a katana. His Zanpakuto, Ryojin Jaka, is said to have more offensive power than every other Zanpakuto in the Serate, and is the most powerful fire-type Zanpakuto possibly ever created. And upon the release of Captain Yamamoto's Shikai, it's said that the Ryatsu and the Flames release are so powerful they can be felt from miles away, if not across the entirety of the Serate. Anything that Captain Yamamoto waves his sword at is incinerated. The heat is so significant that it scorches the sky, removing any clouds. 
boats, but things get a whole lot scarier when Captain Yamamoto releases his Bunkai. Captain Yamamoto's Bunkai, Zaka no Tachi, takes all of the flames released by his Shikai and sucks them into his blade. And thus, in this Bunkai form, Captain Yamamoto's sword burns anything it touches out of existence. However, whenever this Bunkai is released, it has the undesired side effect of evaporating all of the moisture within an area at least as large as the Serate. That is to say that every cloud, lake, bird bath gets evaporated immediately. In fact, it's stated that if Captain Yamamoto's Bunkai is released for too long, it could destroy the entirety of the Serate just by existing. But Captain Yamamoto's Bunkai does more than just that. It coats his blade and his body in the flames of the sun. It's said that his sword and his body burn at 15 million degrees Celsius upon the release of his Bunkai. And his Bunkai has four techniques, one for each of the four cardinal directions. His first technique, East, is activated immediately upon the activation of the Bunkai that concentrates the entirety of his flames into the tip of his sword. See, the tip of his sword does not cut or slash. Anything it touches is burned out of existence. That's it. His second ability, West, is also activated upon the release of his Bunkai. This is the ability that engulfs both him and his sword in 15 million degrees Celsius heat. However, South is where things start to go South. See, upon the activation of South, Yamamoto was able to call forth the corpses of everybody who's ever been killed by his flames. And considering the fact, and considering the fact that prior to the Gote 13 existing, he was just a rove lunatic, and he's been battling for almost 2,000 years, that's a whole lot of corpses. And if hypothetically he's killed one of your friends, he can call that corpse forward and send them directly at you. So not only is he a necromancer, he's a necromancer who knows what friends of yours he's killed. His last Bankai move is North, that fires a concentrated blast of heat that incinerates anything it touches. So yeah, if you thought other Bankai on this list were the perfect defensive and offensive mechanisms, they really don't match up to Zanka no Tachi. But Genryo Yamamoto is not the main character of Bleach. No, that's Ichigo. And therefore, of course, Ichigo has to be pretty high on this list, though not number one. So coming in at number two, we have Ichigo's Bankai, Tensa Zangetsu. I'm not even gonna go over Ichigo's previous Zanpakuto, because obviously Ichigo's original Zanpakuto was broken in his first battle against Yahaba, and therefore he has to go to the Royal Palace to get a new Zanpakuto. However, before he gets a new Zanpakuto, he has to come to terms with his lineage. That is, the lineage of him being part Hollow, part Shinigami, part Quincy, part Human, and part Fullbringer. And this leads to Ichigo getting his true Zanpakuto, which, just like Shun Sui's, is a dual-bladed one, with the larger blade representing his inner Hollow and the shorter blade representing Old Man Zengetsu, which in actuality is Yehaba and the manifestation of his Quincy powers, because his mother was a Quincy. Ichigo Shikai has two different abilities, Getsuga Tensho and Getsuga Jujisho. Getsuga Tensho releases a highly concentrated blast of Reishi from the tip of his Shikai, which takes form in the shape of a crescent moon or a wave. Ichigo's other ability, Getsuga Jujisho, is essentially a Getsuga Tensho, however it forms a cross. It's two slashes instead of one. And this technique is so powerful it was able to completely eliminate the stern red Candace's electrocution ability and blow off her left arm. But this is to be expected when we consider the fact that Getsuka Tensho, which is technically probably the weaker of these two abilities, was strong enough to knock Yahaba back several meters and slice the Soul King Palace in half. However, Ichigo's true abilities come in the form of his Bankai, Tensa Zengetsu. In order to activate his true Bankai, he puts the two of his swords together and envelops himself in the entire Bankai. Now, while Ichigo's previous Bankai just created a long, thin black blade, his true Bankai creates a massive white and black sword. But what is Ichigo's true Bankai ability? We actually don't know. We straight up never see it. So Nick, how am I putting a Bankai whose abilities we don't know this high on the list? Well, because Yehaba identifies that that Bankai is dangerous to him. And thus, Yehaba goes out of his way multiple times to either destroy or try to destroy this Bankai. So while we don't know the abilities of the Bankai, the fact that the strongest person in the entirety of the Big Three decided that that was an issue for him and that it should be destroyed so that it never hits him kind of speaks to its strength. Because the only other person he's ever treated with that much respect and fear was Genryo Yamamoto. On top of this, Getsuka Tensho's generated from this true Bankai blade are strong enough to be able to deal legitimate damage to the Yehaba, who once again, is much stronger than Ichigo. But enough about the main character of the story, let's talk about someone who shows up at the end, has one fight, and then disappears, because coming in at number one, we have Ichibei and his Bankai, 
Chinucci. Ichibe is the captain of Squad Zero, and therefore the strongest man in the entirety of the Soul Society except for the Soul King. Ichibe is kind of the person who made Shinigami a thing, as he was the first person to do everything, and is therefore known as the monk who gives the true name. See, Ichibe was not only the first person to have a Zanpakuto, but also the first person to have a Shikai and a Bankai, and therefore it was up to him to name all of these things that he was the first person to do. And because of this, Ichibe actually knows the name of every single Zanpakuto that's given to a Shinigami before even they do. And Ichibe is incredibly broken. Like I said, he's the strongest person in the Soul Society not named the Soul King. In fact, Ichibe is so powerful that his name carries a curse. And if you say it while not being worthy to, you lose your voice. Not to mention that if Ichibe is killed or blown into millions of little pieces, so long as somebody says his name, he can regenerate because he gets energy because of the curse from people saying his name. But even with all this, like the majority of people on this list, a lot of Ichibe's strength comes from his Zanpakuto and Bankai. See, Ichibe's Zanpakuto is referred to as Ichimonj. It's a large calligraphy brush. And with the power of this brush, he has an ability known as ink manipulation, where any word that he writes out using his ink becomes reality. If he writes conceal on the side of a large building, that building disappears. On top of that, in its unreleased form, it also has an ability known as name severing. See, the brush does not cut you, but whatever it hits, name. So if Ichibe were to hypothetically hit me in the leg, he could cut off the G from my L-E-G and make it just the... Le. But because the length of the name of my leg is now technically only at 66% capacity, my leg is now a third weaker, and it only gets worse when he releases his Shikai. Upon commanding the word blacken, his paintbrush turns into a spear. And in this form, whenever Ichibe swings his spear, it releases black ink. And anything that comes into contact with that black ink is smothered and loses its name. And since it loses its name, it loses all power. So if he hits my leg, it doesn't become a le, it becomes a nothing, and I can't use it. Not to mention whenever he releases his Shikai, all the black in the universe comes under his control. So if I was battling him while wearing this t-shirt, he could use this t-shirt against me. And because of this, technically his ability can't be stolen. Like, you can steal his Shikai from him, but because it controls all the black in the universe, he just gets it back. But it gets worse than that. His strongest ability with the Shikai form, Futen Tai Satsuru, has him generate a cup that he fills with black ink and then drinks. And after drinking this cup of blackness and summoning a mausoleum, Ichibe takes all of the darkness out of somebody, which actually doesn't sound that bad. Except, of course, when you consider the fact that everything inside of our body is dark. And so it just erases you until nothing is left. And I mean nothing, including your soul. If you get hit with this, you don't even reincarnate. But Nick, what about his bunkai? Isn't that what this video is about? Yes, of course, but Ichimanchi's bunkai isn't a bunkai, it's a Shinuchi, because it existed before the concept of bunkai. The activation of the Shinuchi turns Ichibei's brush white. And with this technique, Ichibei is able to change people's names. Anybody hit by the white ink that Ichibei is controlling is now officially under his control. So let's say hypothetically he hits me with his white ink. He could change my name to Cockroach instead of Nick. And therefore, instead of being as powerful as a human named Nick, I would be as powerful as a cockroach. And he can do this with whatever name he wants to. He can make you as weak or as strong as he wants to. He could change my name to Elephant, Yehaba, or Dung Beetle, or Black Ant. All the possibilities under Ichibei's Grand Shinuchi. Therefore, it is by far and away the most powerful Bankai in existence. Which makes sense because it existed before Bankai even were thought of by the man who this Bankai belongs to. What do you guys think? What would your top 10 list of Bankai look like? Tell me in the comments below. And while it goes down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Nothing like a 45-minute Bleach video for me to test how good I am at pronouncing words from other languages.